Hello, everyone. My name is Nancy Morgan. I'm the executive director of Playwrights Guild of Canada. And I'm delighted to welcome you to the 2021 Tom Henry Award. Uh, tonight, what I'd like to do before we start the evening is to make a land acknowledgement. The Playwrights Guild of Canada honors and acknowledges the Territory of Federacy, the Metis, the Anishinaabek, including the Mississaugas, the Credit for Nation. We recognize and respect all recorded and unrecorded nations shared for this land of Toronto, meaning where the trees meet the water. PGC is grateful for the opportunity to protect and care for the stories of this community. If you are this evening, as you are joining us, please feel free to add to the chat. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce to you our tonight's talent host, Carmen Aguirre. Hello. Welcome to the Tom Hendry Awards, a celebration of Canadian playwriting with Playwrights Guild of Canada. This year, we are presenting 10 awards. Woohoo, that's a lot. Tonight, the winners and recipients for all 10 awards will be revealed. The Playwrights Guild Drama Award, the Bra Door Award, the Chris Tolley and Darini Wolcombe Comedy Award, the Gasa Award, the Sharon Enkin Plays for Young People Award, the Dan School of Drama and Music Musical Award, the Honorary Member Award, the Lifetime Member Award, the Arts and Letters Club of Toronto Foundation's Robert Beardsley Award, and the RBC Emerging Playwright Award. We will see a lot of the nominees here tonight to chat with us about their shortlisted plays. We also have little surprise videos throughout the night from our presenting partners. PGC has asked theaters from different regions in the country to present some of our awards. Tonight, we will be going into the theater and spaces of Guandac Theater in Whitehorse, Yukon, Alberta Theater Projects in Calgary, Alberta, Prairie Theater Exchange in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Nightwood Theatre in Toronto, Ontario, the Arts and Letters Club of Toronto in Toronto, Ontario, Thousand Islands Playhouse in Gananoque, Ontario, Halifax Theatre for Young People in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and Watermark Theatre in North Rustico, Prince Edward Island. PGC's annual fundraiser, the online auction, is running right now and is open until November 15th. There are some great packages that you might want to consider for your holiday shopping or for a nice treat for yourself. I am currently in Stratford, Ontario, where I am Artistic Associate of New Play Development, and I'm here doing some work. Stratford is on Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Ojibwe territory. And it's just such an honor to be honoring all of my friends and colleagues tonight. So we're gonna get right to it because we do have 10 awards. Um, the first one is the Robert Beardsley Award. It's funded and presented by the Arts and Letters Club of Toronto Foundation. The Robert Beardsley Award for Young Playwrights is granted to a full-time secondary or post-secondary student within the GTA for the creation of a one-act play script. I would like to welcome the shortlisted playwrights on screen with me. We have Katrina Creelman, Camille Inson, and Shreya Ja. We have one question for all shortlisted playwrights that will give us a little peek into this new work of theirs. So Katrina, let's start with you. 
First, I want you to share the name of the play with us. And then can you tell us what your favorite line in the play is and why? Sure. Um, so my play is called Happy Pills. And the line that I chose is actually one of the last lines in the play. It's, so if it's up to me, I choose to be brave. I choose to live. Um, this play deals a lot with mental health, especially mental health among students my age. And um, I came to a realization as I was um, creating this piece that one of the bravest things that a person can do when they're finding themselves in a really difficult spot is to just, you know, wake up brush your teeth, have something to eat. And I think that, that you, the whole idea of choosing to continue living, even if it feels really difficult, is one of the bravest things that a person can do. So that is why I chose that particular line. Thank you so much, Katrina. Can you tell us the line one more time? Sure. So if, so if it's up to me, I choose to be brave. I choose to live. Beautiful. Thank you so much. What about you, Camille? Hello, am I, are you able to hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect, technology. Um, yeah, hello, my name is Camille. The name of my play is We All Got Lost. And my favorite line from the show is, um, quote, we want stories to take us on adventures and return us like heroes, right? But that's not how things are. Um, and the reason why I like that line is because so We All Got Lost is a play about a band of uh, young Catholic schoolgirls forming a queer sacrilegious cult in the Northern Ontario woods, but it's also heavily a play about storytelling and about our cultural need for storytelling and uh, about how we tell stories to make sense of the world and our place within it, about the, the magic of storytelling. Um, but stories can also hurt us and they can be they can be painful to witness or tell and they can bring us to uncomfortable truths about ourselves. So that quote for me says that, uh, you know, we often come to stories for comfort and for belonging and self-affirmation, but then sometimes we leave in a different place. And that's something that each of the characters experience in this weird poetic show. <laughs> Thank you so much. Do you mind telling us the line again? Yes, it's, uh, we want stories to take us on adventures and return us like heroes, right? But that's not how things are. Beautiful, thank you so much. How about you, Shreya? So my show, Statistics, is actually a musical and it discusses the parallel stories of a current day pre-medical student and Rosalind Franklin, an esteemed biologist from the 1950s. And the line that I've chosen is from a song detailing Rosalind's journey and her struggle against the misogyny of the lab and the scientific world that she was in. And the line that she sings is, who's to say that the way things are is how it's done and said. If I have any say, there will be change in years and months ahead. The song actually wasn't in the first draft, which is possibly why I'm a little more fond of it. But this line is sung right after she's been incredibly sort of beaten down and belittled by colleagues and she finds her sort of strength to go on and keep fighting. And this line to me is really about motivation and passion for what you do. And ultimately, if you have enough love for what you do, then no one is really going to be able to stop you as much as they might try. And this has been a real, this kind of passion that I've seen through my research into Rosalind Franklin has been really inspiring for me as I pursue my own scientific and medical education mm -hmm. and is something that I turn to in times when I might be getting frustrated or discouraged by my own studies. So that's why I picked this line. Okay, and can you give us the line again? Who's to say that the way things are is how it's done and said. If I have any say, there will be change in years and months ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you. So thank, thank you for joining us tonight, all three of you. And I would like to remind the audience that you can buy the shortlist play bundle to read some of the pieces we are hearing about tonight, like these three amazing pieces. You can click on the link in the chat to purchase that bundle. And we will now hear from the Arts and Letters Club of Toronto Foundation as they announce the winner.
Good evening, everyone. It is a pleasure to take part in the Tom Hendry Awards this year. I'm John McKellar, and I currently serve as a director on the board of the Arts and Letters Club of Toronto Foundation. We acknowledge the land we are meeting on is a traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Ashtonabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We also acknowledge Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. Now, the Foundation has sponsored the Robert Beersley Award for Young Playwrights for the past six years. The previous winners of the Young Playwrights Award continue to thrive in the Canadian theatre community as playwrights and in other roles. Luke Reese, a former producer with the Obsidian Theatre Company, is now Associate Artistic Director at Soul Pepper Theatre Company. Alexander Zonich volunteered as a director on our Foundation Board. Daniel Carter has been Interim Programming Director at Buddies in Bad Times Theatre in Toronto since September 2020. Julie Flan's play, Never Walk Alone, was part of the Paprika Theatre Festival last year. She is also a playwriting student at the National Theatre School in Montreal. And last year's winner, Audrey krieger Potroff, has had her award-winning play, Tragedy, a comedy, published. It is very gratifying to see that every, even during these challenging times, creativity is flourishing. The shortlist plays for this year's Robert Beardsley Award for Young Playwrights are Happy Pills, Statistics, and We All Got Lost. The jury thought Happy Pills by Katrina Cushman was rich with theatricality and had a strong need to tell the story. The jury said Statistics by Shreya Ya was structurally successful with knowledge of the subject matter. Finally, the jury thought that We All Got Lost by Camilla Idson was engaging with a clear rhythm and demonstrated an intellectual way of examining perspectives. And the winner is, drum rolls, Camilla Inson for We All Got Lost. I look forward to hearing of the continued success of all the young members of the theatre community. And finally, congratulations to all the winners and nominees this year. I'm so glad that I, I swore a lot off camera and I'm really glad that it was. I have to give my speech. Okay. Hello. Thank you so much to the Playwrights Guild of Canada. Whoa. Ugh, breathe to the Arts and Letters Club of Toronto Foundation and to the jury for this incredible honor. I am sweating so much. I want to congratulate uh, the two other nominees in my category for their incredible work, as well as the all the other nominees here tonight for their beautiful and important contributions to the Canadian theater ecology. Uh, it's so cool to be among you. Uh, this play emerged through a series of conversations I had with other queer women around Hamilton and the GTA uh, about girlhood and religion and, and storytelling and queerness. So I need to thank everyone who indulged me in any of those conversations. Uh, I want to thank the Hamilton Fringe and the New Play Contest for giving this show a platform for the first time. Uh, I'd like to thank Jess, uh, Caitlin, Evelyn, Miranda, and David for their extreme generosity. And we're sp we were supposed to do this show again, um, backed by a regional theater, but COVID got in our way, which sucked, but being here uh, is just as cool. So thank you. I, I wanna dedicate this award to all of the young queer women and non-binary folk out there who wanna be writers, but don't see themselves reflected in the canon enough. And to the queer people in Hamilton who came to see this show and felt seen and talked to us after that meant so much. Last but not least, this play and this award is for my best friend and forever life partner, Ariana. I love you so much. This is as much yours as it is, as it is mine. I can't wait to call you right now and scream on the phone. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. This is awesome. <laughs> Congratulations, Camille. That, that's so, I love it. I, thank you. Thank you for that beautiful, beautiful speech. It's just, yeah, I'm very happy for you. Okay, so we're going to keep going. Now we have the RBC Emerging Playwright Award. 
The RBC Emerging Playwright Award gives up and coming playwrights the opportunity to win a six month mentorship with a professional playwright of their choice, as well as a $2,000 cash prize. PGC offers a second place prize of $1,000 and a third place prize of $500. So I would like to welcome the shortlisted playwrights on screen with me. We have Nicholas Guerrero, Virginia Page Yena, and Zahida Rahamtula. Let's start with Nicholas. First, please share the name of the play with us, and then can you tell us what your favorite line in the play is and why? Of course. So my play is called Green Knight on the Frog River. And uh, the line I've chosen is from a character called Isabel. Uh, she says, you know what my name means? Cavalairu in Portuguese it means knight. That's what I am. That's what I've been. A sworn protector. Literally, I was 10 or 11 when I saw an inconvenient truth. And that night I went out to the old Gary Oak in my backyard and put my arms around its bark and I gave it my word I'd not let the world die. Um, there's a lot of things going on in that line, which is why I chose it. Um, things that are like kind of important to me that I sneak into most of my plays. Uh, there's a little bit of Portuguese, which I put in all my plays. Um, and it also mentions this theme of like knights and chivalry, which is something that I've been interested in in a long time. Um, and then it mentions the Gary Oak trees, which are these beautiful gnarled oaks that you find in the traditional territory of Lekwungen speaking people, also known as the Songhees and the Esquimalt First Nations, and literally you know, out in my backyard right now. Um, and then there's this memory I have uh, of when I was in sixth grade and watching a documentary about climate change and crying and weeping, and we promised each other that we'd stop it somehow, that we'd work, do something that this would be our goal in life. And then, you know, life happened and we didn't do any of that. Um, but I kind of wonder what my life would have been like if I took that promise a little bit more seriously. And that's kind of what the play came from. So the line's personal on a number of levels. Can you give us a line one more time? Of course. Um, <laughs> you know what my name means? Cavalero, Portuguese. It means night. That's what I am. That's what I've been. A sworn protector. Literally, I was 10 or 11 when I saw an inconvenient truth. That night, I went out to the old Gary Oak in my backyard, put my arms around its bark, and I gave it my word I'd not let the world die. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Virginia, how about you? Uh, yes. Um, so my favorite line is actually a line that is said by both Giles and Morgan, my protagonists. Um, the play is called The Far Off Edge of Things. And this is the line. I watched her. I could do nothing else. I cannot even tell if I was moving toward her or away from her. Time dilated. And um, this line occurs when Giles and Morgan are both birding. And Morgan sees a Bennu, which is an Egyptian mythological bird. Uh, Giles, who is a realist, cannot see things that uh, Morgan can see. And it puts the play in a, a real liminal place. Uh, this is the Peripatea, the place where um, there's a reversal and everything changes and the world becomes more indeterminate. And this is where uncertainty lives. And uh, yeah, I think that's that's mainly what it is. Morgan enters the disability space and Morgan and Giles' relationship skips a heartbeat and a flood looms in the middle of a drought and it becomes a fairy tale in a postmodern context. Can you give us a line again? Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, I watched her. I could do nothing else. I cannot even tell if I was moving toward her or away from her. Time dilated. Well, thank you. Thank you. And Zahida, we're both at Stratford right now. You're at the Playwrights Retreat. <laughs> Can you tell us uh, your favorite line of your play and what the play is and why it's your favorite line? 
Sure, I thank you. Uh, so my play is called The Frontliners. Um, and the line, I think the line that I chose is from the end of the play. And it's when one of the main characters, Yusuf, has just lost his job after working in the same place for 17 years. And he comes to collect his belongings from the office where he runs into his coworker, Omar. Um, and Omar says to Yusuf, Yusuf, you know, I was thinking maybe we weren't actually meant Maybe it's like some people live many lifetimes in their one life and some people just live one, you know? Maybe that's just how it is, but yeah, thanks. I know it didn't, but I'm really glad you were here and I'm going to miss you a lot. And then they say goodbye. Um, and I chose that line because there isn't really a fair ending to this play. So the characters here grapple to find their own. Um, and I think that this is so often the case in many real life settings where not everything follows the neat arc like we like it to as playwrights and not all lives are wrapped up in a way that gives a person closure or a sense that their suffering led somewhere or meant something. Um, and so I realize that's a sad line to choose as, as a favorite, but uh, the way that people still find hope and humor as, as these two fellows do in the play, uh, despite things like this, is, is something that interests me about um, when people write stories, and it also interests me in, in daily life. So that's why I chose that line. Okay, give it to us one more time. Uh, it is maybe, maybe we aren't actually meant. Maybe it's like some people live many lifetimes in their one life, and some people live just one, you know? Wow, thank you so much. I feel like we could talk forever, all of us. Okay, but we have to keep moving. <laughs> so... Um, we will now hear from Alberta Theatre Projects as they announce the winner. Hello, my name is Hasem Kadri and I am the Interim Artistic Director of Alberta Theatre Projects here in Calgary, located on the traditional territories of the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. We are excited to be a presenting partner of the Tom Henry Awards. ATP has had a storied history as a leader in play development across the country, so it gives me great delight to announce this year's winner of the RBC Emerging Playwright Award. The nominees are Nicholas Guerrero for The Green Knight on the Frog River, Virginia Page Yena for The Far Off Edge of Things, and Zahida Rahamtula for The Frontliners. And the winner is... Zahida Rahimtula, The Frontliners. Congratulations to all the nominees. We look forward to seeing your works on stages across the country. Stay safe and be well. Hi, everyone. Um, Thank you so much. Um, I'm really, uh, I'm really so glad um, to be chosen that the play was chosen, and I'm also really glad that PGC asked us to prepare some words just in case this happens because I'm not very good on the spot. Um, so I'm going to to read you what I wrote. Uh, and as Carmen said, I'm actually coming to you from the territory of the uh, Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and the Ojibwe peoples, which is today called Stratford. Um, and as an uninvited guest on these territories, I'm very grateful to live, play, and mostly to be able to write on these lands. Um, I'm really humbled and honored to receive the 2021 Emerging Playwright Award. Um, and I want to congratulate my fellow nominees, Nicholas and Virginia, as well as all the finalists who are in the green room, uh, who are part of this year's Tom Hendry's Awards, and to PGC for making opportunities like this for new playwrights happen. Um, I always say, and I always think it makes a village to, to make a play, and The Frontliners is no exception. And on this journey, uh, there are so many people to thank. The list is long, but if it wasn't for all of these collaborators and people, I don't know where this play would have been. Starting with my current collaborators at PTC, the Playwrights Theatre Centre in Vancouver. My right hand, Davy Calderon, Heidi Taylor, who has supported this play, and me in so many ways, Olivia E.T., Joanna Garfunkel, Maria, Belinda, and everyone at PTC, Company Theatre, Philip and Loretta, uh, the Silk Road Institute, Mohammed Shaheen, Miriam Zaidi, Mercedes Baroque, Osei Mekinberia, also to Rumble Theatre, to Jiv and Shanai. Um, my thanks goes also to the Arts Club Theatre Company, to Stephen Drover and Ashley Corcoran, who really deeply shaped the first draft of the Frontliners at the Arts Club Emerging Playwrights Unit, where I wrote the first draft, as well as my fellow unit members, Scott, Ronwin, and Millie, and also Bonnie Ma, who made and continues to make that unit and so many opportunities for emerging playwrights in BC possible. 
Revolver Theater Festival gave the play a reading, and Adrian Francis Mustafa, Sabrina Jaspreet, and all the actors that have lent the script their voices. Um, I also want to take a moment to acknowledge all the elders, and specifically, I've been thinking a lot about the BIPOC elders that came into theater before me. Um, and I'm coming into theater at a time where doors have been opened because of the work of them, uh, often at great risk and sacrifice to their own careers. And of course, um, I'm aware that there's still much to be done, and I know I also have a responsibility of trying to leave the path a little easier for artists facing barriers after me but it's something I've thought about a lot lately. Um, and so from the bottom of my heart, I really wanted to express my appreciation to all that have paved the way. Um, I also want to take a minute to acknowledge everyone who is on the front lines now. This play is about the front lines of the settlement sector in 2016, but as we all know, Canada is at the beginnings of a new resettlement, which although less publicized this time makes the frontliners really busy. And I want to th think about the people in, in many careers who do their work quietly with integrity and often without much recognition, so the story continues. And finally, finally, uh, I really want to thank my family who are always at every reading, who make the ups and downs of being an artist easier and without whose support and love, I, I don't know what I would do. Um, and then thank you to all, all of you who are here tonight. And I hope that we'll all be able to see each other in the theater soon. And I, I have a feeling that that's gonna, that's gonna happen. Thank you. Congratulations, Zahida, that was beautiful. And I want to mention that second place went to The Far Off Edge of Things by Virginia Page Yena. And third place went to Green Night on the Frog River by Nicholas Guerrero. Congratulations to all of you. And now we're going to go to the Casa Award. I would like to welcome Beverly Cooper to present the Casa Award. An award led and administered by PGC members Beverly Cooper, Cheryl Fogel, Marcia Johnson, Natalie Meisner, Sally Stubbs, and Colleen Wagner. This award promotes the idea that theater is an imperative and vital voice, advocating for change as it responds to and reflects the world we live in. Beverly Cooper recorded her presentation in Nightwood Theatre's space in Toronto, Ontario. The CASA Award is a $5,000 cash prize that is presented to a South African playwright who has a demonstrated commitment to playwriting, buying them time to work on a specific project, one that speaks to today's South Africa. We invite all women, cis and trans, as well as non-binary playwrights to apply. The winner is partnered with two senior mentors, a Canadian dramaturge and a South African director, and they receive a collection of Canadian plays generously donated by Playwrights Canada Press and Chiropo Drama. The award is a partnership between PGC and the African Women's Playwright Network, and our wonderful South African coordinator is Amy Jeffta. This year's jury was made up of South African theater makers, Felisawe Twenstra and Marie Ortslap, along with Canadian playwrights, Marcia Johnson as the third jury member and Sally Stubbs as chair. The jury met over Zoom, bridging our two continents on September the 18th. The deliberations, so I hear, were passionate and generous. The winner of this year's CASA award will join our past winners. Rahani Abrahams, Jenna Gardini, Kella Maswabi, Kaleka Patuma, Tamara Schultz, and Pelissaway Twenstra. The jury wants to emphasize that several playwrights deserve special recognition, particularly two finalists who had applications that were very highly regarded, Napo Mashian and Iman Isaacs. We also want to make two honorable mentions Mercy Kanemeyer and Bob Musa Manisi. And the 2021 CASA Award goes to Titsetso Mashafane Wanoni. Titsetso has been described as a theater prodigy and is one of the most talented and dynamic theater practitioners in Cape Town. Titsetso's application and writing sample reveal a disciplined, brave, and intelligent writer with a strong voice that she is directing at critical issues. 
Tisetso's play, Lamb vs. Slaughterhouse, is the third in a trilogy in which she examines traditional power structures and presents them in what she calls an absurd dramatic container. Tisetso is also exploring system disintegration as narrative and as a writing style, while still discovering and revealing humor and humanity in the world of her play. We're so excited to see where this fearless young writer takes her script with the help of the CASA mentorship. In Tisetso's own words, delivered in her TEDx Youth Talk in Cape Town, it always comes down to one question, what are you gonna do about it? Because of the generous donation of two anonymous benefactors, the CASA award is funded for one more year. Next year, we hope to announce some exciting changes for the sixth and final year of the CASA award. Congratulations. Next is a Sharon Enkin Plays for Young People Award, and it is given annually to a member of PGC who has a new or recently premiered theater for young audiences, TYA Play. I would like to welcome the shortlisted playwrights on screen with me. We have the Frozen River Trio, Michaela Washburn, Joelle Peters and Carrie Costello. We also have Julia Letterer for Small Box and Alexis Diamond, the translator for Erica Tremblay Roy's The Problem with Pink. Okay, so let's start with Michaela, Joelle, and Carrie. What is your favorite line from the play and why? Okay, so the play is Frozen River by you know, the three of us, Michaela, uh, Carrie, and I. And our favorite quote from the play is one of the characters is spoken by the character Grandmother Moon. And it is, sometimes we get so lost in our own world or so scared of someone else's, we fail to see clearly. We hurt people. We freeze like the river, jagged and dangerous. And we chose that quote because in many ways, we are in this moment. Many of us are in this moment right now. We are so lost in our own world or scared of someone else's. And that is what we want to change both with the collaboration and with this play that hopefully will be seen by many, many young people. Okay, can you tell us the line again? Sure. Sometimes we get so lost in our own world or so scared of someone else's that we fail to see clearly. We hurt people. We freeze like the river, jagged and dangerous. Thank you. You can hear me, right? Yes, good. There was a moment there when I thought you couldn't hear me. Okay. Uh, Julia, what is your favorite line from the play and why? So my play is called Small Bots and my favorite line is, I never feel sad, except for for 20 minutes on Tuesdays when my mom likes to be comforting. And um, it's spoken by Flash, who is a robot teen who's been adopted by you know, a real family and is fitting into high school. And I, I like the line because it's a comedy and so it's funny. Um, and just the idea of scheduling your child's sadness um, just seems ridiculous. I mean, it's a mother who is making technology more human so that she can feel more human herself. Um, so I think that's absurd. It also may be relatable. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so hopefully it makes you laugh and then makes you like, mm -hmm, and then maybe makes you think a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's what's my favorite. And, and what's the line again? I never feel sad except for for 20 minutes on Tuesdays when my mom likes to be comforting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Alexis, how about you? Okay, so <clears throat> look, mom, I'm big. Look, dad, I run fast. Look, mom, I didn't even cry. Look, dad, I put up my dukes. Look, mom, I break hearts. Look, dad, I'm like the other boys. Happy now? It was more than one line. 
Oh, I could listen to I could listen to it all night. I mean, okay, no, it's great. <laughs> Um, can you tell us why you like that line? Or um, it was really hard to pick my favorite line because uh, the text is written very spare and um, it's a it's a text with choreography and it was very hard to isolate one line and that was the speech that I felt kind of encapsulated the play the best. Um, it's a play about three boys and um, a non-binary person who play together and, and they play on a pink carpet thus thus the title the problem with pink and um the crisis comes when the the when they think people are watching and judging them and and then they try to disassociate themselves from the fun that they were having before where there was no judgment and they were just in the play and um and so this to me really encapsulated that that crisis wow okay so give us the lines again sure <laughs> my pleasure <laughs> Look, mom, I'm big. Look, dad, I run fast. Look, mom, I didn't even cry. Look, dad, I put up my dukes. Look, mom, I break hearts. Look, dad, I'm like the other boys. Happy now? Hmm. Well, thank you. Well, thank, thanks to all of you for, for joining us tonight. And we will now hear from Halifax Theatre for Young People as they announce the winner. Hello, I'm Tessa Mendel, Artistic Director of Halifax Theatre for Young People, and I'm speaking to you from Mi'kma'ki, Nova Scotia, the traditional and unceded lands of the Mi'kmaq people. I have the great good fortune to be presenting the Sharon Enkin Place for Young People Award, surrounded by the cast of Halifax Theatre for Young People's production of Mi'kmaq Stories, Past and Present, and surrounded as well by the beautiful work of Mi'kmaq artists Jordan Bennett. The shortlist for the Sharon Enkin Place for Young People Award is Julia Ladera for Smallbots, Erica Tremblay-Roi for The Problem with Pink, translated by Alexis Diamond, and Michaela Washburn, Joelle Peters, and Carrie Costello for Frozen River. Some notes from the jury. The jury thought that Frozen River had power in its specificity and invited children and youth to discuss a challenging topic while remaining gentle and respectful. The jury felt that the problem with pink was risky and interesting with a lot of staging possibilities, as well as an intriguing mystery that would be appealing for young audiences. And the jury found small bots accessible and funny with relatable and powerful themes that would resonate with young people. And the winner is da -da -da -dum. <sighs> Yes, it is Michaela Washburn, Joelle Peters, and Carrie Costello for Frozen River. Congratulations. <laughs> You're on mute, Joelle. <laughs> You're on mute. <laughs> okay. Hello. Um, gotcha. <laughs> All right. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, wow. Okay. Uh, Chimi Gwech. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, well, creating work during the pandemic has been both a struggle and a joy. And we appreciate this opportunity to celebrate our work. And our hope is that young people can see themselves on stage in a way that makes them feel empowered and maybe, just maybe, that experience alters their trajectory a bit. Because small things can change a trajectory. The work we are interested in isn't easy. The writing process, like the play itself, struggles with big questions that are hard for adults, but we know our young people, they need to see and understand these questions. And we're asking big questions that address issues that are very relevant today. Like how do we guide our young audiences to an understanding that reconciliation is an action, it's not just words? And how do we foster hope in a fractured world? Uh, we would like to thank Canada Council and Manitoba Arts Council who provided funding for us to create the play. 
And we would also like to thank Manitoba Theatre for Young People for their support of this project. We'd also like to thank all of the actors, the directors, and the dramaturges that have contributed to the process along the way. We've received so many wonderful gifts from artists and communities alike for us to be able to meet and work virtually. And a special thank you to our elders, knowledge keepers, and Cam Robinson, our beautiful language keeper for inspiring us with his passion for his language and staying with us on this long journey with many stops and starts. <laughs> And finally, thank you to the Playwrights Guild for supporting and acknowledging work for young honor audiences. We are honored. Thank you. Jimmy Wow. Congratulations to all three of you. Wow. Okay, so now it's time for the Bra Door Award. It's presented by PGC's Women's Caucus and it recognizes an individual or individuals for his, her, or their efforts in supporting and promoting the work of Canadian women playwrights. And the award is sponsored by Scirocco Drama and Playwrights Canada Press. Congratulations to the seven nominees for the award. We will now hear from Women's Caucus member, Marcia Johnson, to announce the recipient. Hello, greetings to everyone across Turtle Island and beyond. The Broad Door Award is presented by PGC's Women's Caucus to recognize an individual or individuals for her, his, or their efforts in supporting and promoting the work of Canadian women playwrights. Here is this year's group of powerful nominees. Micheline Chevrier, Clem Martini, Nicole Nadris, Anna Pappas, Donna Spencer, Persistence Theatre Company, and Wet Ink Collective and its co-artistic directors, Susan McFarlane, Loretta Sito, and Lina Goldhar-Smith. Congratulations to you all. This year's Broad Door Award recipient is Micheline Chevrier. Micheline was nominated by Marie Belizo, who says, Micheline is a brilliant artistic director, an outstanding director and dramaturg, and on top of all of that, a dedicated and generous educator and mentor. Since the beginning of her now over 40 year career, she has been committed to women artists. She led Montreal's Imigo Theatre to reimagine their mandate to produce socially relevant feminist work and support both emerging and established women and non-binary artists to tell their stories. Her unrelenting advocacy for equal representation of women and marginalized groups in theater has transformed the Montreal theater community. Women are now being produced more than ever before. Micheline co-created Artista with former artistic associate and emerging theater maker, Joy Ross Jones, who she mentored to lead the program. Artista has now nurtured over a hundred young women and non-binary artists, many of whom are now working professionally. In the past year, Micheline's artistic direction has enabled new forms of storytelling to take center stage at Imago Theatre. Whether it be engaging artists to create site-specific performances using alternative creation processes, commissioning audio plays across Canada, or expanding the company's theatre practices, Micheline has been an unequivocal champion for the vitality of art. Micheline leads by example, not only inspiring but empowering artists to be fierce, dig deep, and share their authentic voices. She continually remains open to new ideas, practices, and ways of thinking. This quality fosters environments of joy and freedom that pushes the border of how big we can dream. We have so much love for her and cherish her unwavering support and artistic integrity, which uplifts so many throughout the country Congratulations, Micheline. Good night, everyone.
Hello, everyone. Um, I am very honored to receive this award. And I'd like to begin by thanking Marie Barlitzo, who um, wrote some very kind, generous words um, about my work. Um, and I guess I would like to simply say that um, the reason I got into theater was because um, I wanted to tell stories, and I believe that stories are our saviors. Um, they are a reflection of who we are, what we need, um, and they are an essential service. Um, that telling stories is really what uh, makes us exist and desire to continue to exist. So for as long as I can remember, my greatest inspiration in theater have been the playwrights. Um, the writers, the ones who are brave, um, who expose their hearts and their souls to us in order to discuss really important matters, in order to ask us to reflect, to provoke us to change, to change ourselves and to change the world. So um, as much as I'm very grateful for this award, um, my work only exists because of their bravery. And so um, thank you to all of you who write and who ask us to make a difference. And yeah, thanks very much. <laughs> Congratulations, Micheline. We're gonna continue with the Chris Tolley and Jervini Wolcombe Comedy Award. This award is given annually for a new comedy by a PGC member, which has not yet had a premier production. We have a video message from our sponsor now. Hi, Dorini and I are honored to be associated with the PGC's Comedy Award this year. Comedy has the ability to make people laugh, feel good, and feel connected, all while examining some of the most profoundly moving and often difficult issues we face today. Canada has the reputation for producing some of the funniest people. Our playwrights are the sharpest, the wittiest, and acutely profound. And this year's short list of brilliant writers exemplifies this. Considering all we've gone through the past two years, we need comedy more than ever. Thank you to those nominated this year for bringing us all so much joy. And thank you to the PGC for highlighting such an important genre. Congratulations, everyone. Excellent. So I would like to welcome the short listed playwrights on screen with me. We have Sonny Drake, John Lazarus, and Christine Quintana. Okay, let's start with Sonny, my beautiful friend, Sonny. Hi, so lovely to be Hi. here with you all. It's so nice to be with you. What is your short listed play and what is your favorite line and why? Okay, well, it's called Every Little Nookie, and it is a, a raunchy romp which uh, interrogates the nuclear family and asks us to reimagine family. And uh, one of my favorite lines is from one of the supporting characters, Matt, who is a straight millennial dad who's recently separated from his wife, and he falls for a queer woman, Annabelle. And uh, he's trying to wrap his head around this wild new world, and he utters... I'm starting to suspect this whole polyamory thing involves a lot more talking about sex than actually having it. And it's one of my favorite lines because I've had so much fun with this play, throwing both a wide range of both millennial and boomer characters into worlds and situations totally out of their depth. And um, I really decided to, to um, create a scandalous socialist sex romp as a way to be able to uh, um, really ask us to consider how um, uh, shifting our ideas about family, about relationships and sex could crack open different possibilities for how we organize our lives, our housing and our economies. Okay, and so can you say the line? Yeah, so it's, I'm starting to suspect this whole polyamory thing involves a lot more talking about sex than actually having it. Thank you. John, my, my first ever playwriting teacher. 
So, I want everybody to know I taught this woman a tiny fraction of everything she knows. <laughs> you taught me a lot. Uh -huh. nice Your voice is still in my head every oh, time I'm sorry. Writing. No, in a good way. In a good way. <laughs> So, okay. John, tell us about your play, your favorite line in it, and why. We've changed the title. It won. Uh, it got the nomination under the title oh. Phenology. It's now called How Oscar Missed His Train, because the protagonist is Oscar Wilde, and it's about his actual real visit to Kingston, Ontario, my hometown right now, uh, in 1882. And uh, my favorite line, well, there, there are so many to choose from, but uh, one favorite is, a young man is pouring his heart out to Oscar, and Oscar says, even hackneyed plots like this one can be distressing to those trapped within them. That's the line. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> and Christine, co-founder of the Canadian Latinx Theatre Artists Coalition. We're in a collective together. We're both from East Van. <laughs> Okay, so tell us what your play is, your favorite line, and why. Yeah, um, my play is called Someone Like You, and uh, it is an adaptation of Cyrano de Bergerac that's actually set in East Van. Um, about a 30-something woman, Isabel, whose life is going great when her friend has a pandemic breakup and has her old friend move in with her, and then in the process of ghostwriting all of her hinge profiles and messages uh, starts to fall for her friend's new boyfriend. And uh, on the way, she uh, finds uh, her way back to her first love, which is writing and poetry. And throughout the, the piece, she gives uh, little snippets of poems. And uh, the quote I chose is when she says, uh, here's another one for you. Mary Oliver, The Summer Day, a lovely, delicate poem with a hell of a closing line. Tell me, what is it that you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Mary, I plan to fuck some shit up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I could, I could spend the whole night talking with every single nominee tonight, but we do have to move on. <laughs> so... We will now hear from Watermark Theater as they announce the winner. Bye. Located in North Rustico, Prince Edward Island, on the land that is the traditional unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq, the Watermark Theater is a professional theater company that provides time-honored plays as well as contemporary plays that resonate with our times. As a company, we are led by the principles of inclusion, diversity, equity, and accessibility, and commit to incorporating these core values in everything we do. The shortlist for the Chris Tolley and Dorini Wilcombe Comedy Award is Sunny Drake for Every Little Nookie, John Lazarus, for Phenology, and Christine Quintana for Someone Like You. The jury shortlisted Every Little Nookie, Phenology, and Someone Like You. The jury said that Every Little Nookie had fun dialogue, well-developed characters, and they felt that this story needed to be on stage. The jury thought that Phenology was well-structured, well-researched, and an exciting read. The jury found someone like you to have a lot of appeal with great exploration around some important topics. And the winner is... Every Little Nookie, Sunny Drake. Congratulations. Huge thank you for this, um, for the uh, acknowledgement and the nourishment. Um, I mean, honestly, I, I pinch myself every single day that I get to be a practicing theatre creator and playwright. Um, I didn't think I'd make it this far in theatre. As a trans person, I didn't initially see a place for myself in theatre at all. And my earliest works premiered in living rooms, backyards, uh, basements, wherever I could wrangle for for free, basically. So to receive this award is super nourishing and it's um, heartwarming and it's really exciting. Um, and I also want to acknowledge that, uh, you know, another, uh, 
uh, way that other than sort of receiving awards that I now get a lot more institutional uh, support for my work, despite what I described as my early beginnings, is it is through the um, through more established artists championing my work and lifting up my work, also through peers and audiences acknowledging my work and the importance of it and messaging me. And I share this because I want to invite each and every one of you tonight to uh, consider how you can and take actions to lift up the voices that we need to see on stage. Um, jot down a list of three artists whose work you believe in and reach out to them in the next week to tell them that their work is really important to you. If you're if you're in a position to do so, ask them how you can support their work. Um, also donate to their fundraising campaigns because um, all of our artists and there's so many people who deserve a whole bunch of support. And I wanted to use a tiny bit of my time in this exception speech to just also uplift some voices who I really believe in. Uh, so shout out to Bilal Baig, to Heath Salazar, to Sulu Kalema, to Rhiannon Collette, to Taya Kasahara, Jay Northcott, Stephen Jackman Torkov, Kai Today, Liam Cirillo, Kylie May, Cyrus Marcus Ware, and Raven Wings, because um, that's also how I'm getting a lot of my nourishment is through um, these other voices who are starting to fill our stages and, and who I want to see so much more supported. Um, speaking of which, huge congrats to my fellow finalists um, and to all the nominees, you all rock. Um, special thanks to the Stratford Festival who have been supporting the development of Every Little Nookie, particularly to my dramaturge, Bob White, for believing in me and this unconventional play. Um, also to my cultural and other script consultants, Donna Michelle St. Bernard, Afi Brown, Beryl Bain, Chanel Gallant, um, Tom Mallison and others, um, numerous actors who've helped um, uh, me hear the play aloud um, and also to the Ontario Arts Council, Toronto Arts Council and Canada Council for giving me some money to write this because um, money is uh, really important um, for all of us. So um, thank you. Congratulations, Sunny. Okay, so we're about halfway through the evening, just a little over halfway through the evening. So it's time to check in on that auction. Who has made their bids? What package are you fighting for? Let us know in the chat. Excellent. It's time for our Honorary Member Award. The Honorary Membership is awarded to an individual or organization for their contribution to the Canadian playwright community. We will now hear from PGC member Sky Gilbert to announce the recipient. Hi. I'm here and very happy to announce the winner of the Playwrights Guild of Canada's Honorary Award. Now, this award is given out every other year and it's voted on by all the members. And it's, this honorary award is given to someone who is a champion of playwrights, who is stellar in the playwriting community. So I know you're in suspense. The winner this year is Joanna Falk. Now, I'm very pleased to say that name. Joanna and I have been friends for, and then that will age both of us, I'm afraid. I think since, uh, I, I would say about 25 years, oh my God. No, no, it's not that long. It's 15, no, it's about 20 years. Anyway, a long time, okay? 
Uh, I met her when we were students in the PhD program at the University of Toronto. And um, she went, I went on to get my PhD. <laughs> she didn't, but the good thing about that is that she became Canada's, well, I would say, leading dramaturg at that point. Um, he, she went into dramaturgy as a profession and she became, I think, Canada's leading dramaturg. So what can I say about um, Joy? Well, when I first met her, she's just so delightful. It's hard for me to describe delightfulness. Do you, do you know it? Have you seen it in action? She is a very charming, sweet, funny, as can be person and incredibly smart. She's also extremely sensitive. So all of these qualities go into a dramaturge. And it's very ironic, me recommending, you know, recommending talking about the wonderfulness of a dramaturge. Because I spent many years, you're all too young to know this, but in the um, 80s, railing against dramaturges, railing against some particular dramaturges whose names we won't mention, and getting into a lot of trouble in the community for railing against dramaturge in general. Odd that I would have, she really is one of my close friends, um, a dramaturge as a close friend, but I do. And uh, it's partially because, or mainly, I think, not only because I just love Joanna, but because I think she's a good dramaturg, and I have worked with her in that capacity. And I think, what does that mean? That means empowering the playwright and not speaking for them. And that means um, tr being, just trying to understand where they're coming from and trying to serve the play. The other thing is, this is going to sound very, uh, crazy, but she knows what theater is. What is theater? Big question. All I can say is I go to theater a lot with Joanna and she knows what it is. Um, and that means that makes a good dramaturge. So I, I, I think Joanna completely deserves this award. And I want to say, Joanna, you stood me up today. I invited you to dinner. And then you said, I can't go. What? Did I come and give you an award? <laughs> yes, I did. I love you. Wow, um, that was unexpected. Thank you so much, Sky, for those lovely words. Um, I also need to say thank you to Beverly Cooper, Marcia Johnson, and Elin Kwan, who nominated me for this award. Um, for a dramaturg to be acknowledged like this by a group of playwrights obviously means a lot. Um, for people who don't know me, I've been a dramaturg for nearly 20 years. I've had the privilege of working with so many um, talented playwrights, some of whom are here tonight. Um, I got asked once, what payoff do I get as a dramaturg since nobody, aside from the playwright, really knows what I do? Um, my payoff is the kind of work I get to do with playwrights. They share their stories with me, their view of the world, their ideas, their fears, their dreams, and that feels like such a gift. And I'm so grateful to have had so many playwrights trust me with their work. And truly a playwright success, whatever that looks like, is my payoff. Um, going forward, I think now more than ever, we're going to need you playwrights to help us make sense of the world that we find ourselves in. The stories that you're going to tell us about the world and what we've all been through are going to be very necessary for all of us moving forward. And I so look forward to seeing them and all of you in real life very soon. And now that I have a membership, you are gonna see me at the meetings. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, thank you, PGC, and thank you again for this award. <laughs> Congratulations, Joanna. Next up is the Dan School of Drama and Music Musical Award. This award is given annually for a new musical work by a PGC member, which has not yet had a premiere production. So I would like to welcome the shortlisted playwrights on screen with me. We have double nominated Anton Lipovetsky and Nick Green. Anton has his Cowboy Tempest Cabaret co-creators, Lucy McNulty and Niall McNeil with him tonight as well. I'm assuming from East Van, woohoo! <laughs> and uh, yeah, welcome everyone. Uh, we've also got uh, Nick, of course. I'm so sorry, Nick. <laughs> Nick, I, I started thinking about East Van. <laughs> 
Nick Green, thank you as well for being here with us tonight. Why don't we start with you? Why don't you tell us the name of your play, what your favorite line is, and why? Sure. Hi, Carmen, by the way, and hello, Anton and everyone. For the record, I'm from North Van, so we still have the Vancouver represents all around, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, the show is called In Real Life with co-lyrics and music by the amazing Kevin Wong and book uh, and co-lyrics by me. And the... Um, the line that I've picked, it's going to sound like a downer, but stick with me, okay? So the line is actually a lyric that was written by the amazing Kevin Wong. Um, and that lyric is, let terror, anger, sorrow come, yes, anything but dead and numb. And basically the idea in the show, uh, it's, it's about a, a teenage boy in a distant future who's kind of stuck in this world of cubes and they're all very disconnected and living life through screens. And the idea was this, this boy is wanting to find more, find connection, find out what real life is. And this was written before the pandemic. So it all kind of doubled down and had so much more meaning when that actually turned into our lives a little bit. And what this line kind of speaks to is the feeling of, I would rather have all of the difficult, hard feelings than the numbness that is the alternative. And I know that way too well now, having watched 25 seasons of Real Housewives, just to kind of escape the terror. And now it's like, bring on the terror. Just let me feel something. Wow. Can you give us the line again? Sure. So the line is, let terror, anger, sorrow come. Yes, anything but dead and numb. Wow, thank you. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, how about Anton, Lucy, and Niall? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I'm honored to uh, be part of two musical teams that are represented here. And uh, I, I'll say a line from Monosterous first. We're all part of Cowboy Tempest Cabaret. And then uh, Mono the Monosterous team is my writing songwriting partner, Ben Elliott. Uh, Josh Epstein and Kyle Rideout, who wrote the book, uh, Meg Rowe, our dramaturg, and Suzette Mayer, who wrote the novel upon which the musical was based. Um, Josh and Kyle, the book writers, they, they chose this line. I followed you blindly down a death hole on a unicorn quest. You got to do the same here. And uh, they really like that line. It, they, they feel it kind of mirrors our pact with the audience as writers. Like, you're trusting us with your attention in this dark theater. You're sitting here for two hours. We have to deliver with uh, saying something entertaining and hopefully truthful. And that line was, I followed you blindly down a death hole in a unicorn quest. You got to do the same here. Um, and then for Cowboy Chef, this cabaret, what line did you pick? Uh, I think we picked uh, the zoo butterfly by calling on your face. Uh, I think that's from the line we all agree on to. Uh, uh, the other favorite line is uh, people who people who loves to be in love and come to be in love. That's two favorite lines we agreed. Nice. Yeah, we had a hard time picking a favorite line, but the line we chose was, it's like a zoo of butterflies crawling around my whole face. And it's uh, Miranda's line when she first sees Ferdinand. That's beautiful. Wow, thank you so much. Okay, so we will now hear from Prairie Theater Exchange as they announce the winner. Hi everyone and welcome to Prairie Theatre Exchange. My name is Tom and I'm the artistic director here. My name is Lisa Lee and I'm the managing director. Yeah, and we're calling in today from Winnipeg, Manitoba on Treaty 1 territory, the traditional territory of the Anishinaabeg, Cree, Dakota, and Métis nations, as well as the home of many other Indigenous nations and peoples. And we're here in our theatre, where in a few weeks we're going to premiere a new work by a local Cree writer and playwright, Darla Contwa, called The War Being Waged. And the set, which you can see behind us, which is totally in progress, um, is by Andy Morrow. And we are so honored and excited to be presenting the Musical Award for Dan School of Drama and Music. Here come the nominees. 
Okay, so the nominees are Anton Lipovetsky for Monoceros, music and lyrics by Ben Elliott and Anton Lipovetsky, book uh, by Josh Epstein and Kyle Rideout, and adapted from the novel by Suzette Mayer. The jury enjoyed how the storytelling of Monoceros was folded into the music, which they also felt was relevant and current. Yeah. And the second nominee is Nick Green for In Real Life with co-creator Kevin Wall. The jury said that In Real Life had lovely choral textures with futuristic elements and exciting possibilities. And the third and final nominee is Anton Lipovetsky for Cowboy Tempest Cabaret with Niall McNeil as co-creator and lyricist and Lucy McNulty as co-creator. The jury thought that Cowboy Tempest Cabaret was musically exciting, playful, and truthful. Mm. And now the award goes to... In, In Real Life. Life. Congratulations to Nick Green and Kevin Wong, and congratulations to all of the nominees. Yeah, and we want to send out a special congratulations and thank you to all the writers uh, and musicians, composers that have put uh, either the story in written word onto the page or in music onto the page this past year. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Wow. Um, uh, Kevin and I are just so, so touched by this. Thank you so much. Um, there have been so many uh, really discouraging and disappointing times uh, since the March 13th of 2020, um, when we were in the midst of rehearsing for a developmental production of this show and, and it got cut, uh, shut down. And um, this is just such a moment of light for us both. So thank you. Um, we want to say a huge thank you to uh, Ann Hodges and Chris Barilero for being amazing partners in the development of the show, to Mitchell Marcus and Ray Hogg, thanks for letting us workshop in your backyard, <laughs> um, and of course the whole team at the Musical Stage Company. A big thank you to Michael Rubinoff, also thank you to Theater Sheridan. Um, to the amazing, amazing Colin Rivers, who we're so grateful to, uh, to the Playwrights Guild and to the jury. And um, we really wanna dedicate this to, to the many, many uh, Sheridan students who worked so hard for that week up until the day the show was canceled. Um, and to all the actors and creative team members that have helped us develop the show over the years. Um, this is, this is such an honor and we really, really appreciate this award. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Nick. Now it's time for our memorial video. Um, it's to remember some of the playwrights we have lost in the last few years.
Thank you to Amber Matt and that PGC for creating that beautiful video. Thank you. Now it's time for the Playwright Guild Drama Award. So this new award is given for a drama by a PGC member, which has not yet had a professional premiere production. I would like to welcome the shortlisted playwrights on screen with me. We have Renelta Arluk, Yolanda Banel, and Dalbir Singh. So let's start with you, Renelta. What is the name of your shortlisted play and what is your favorite line and why? Uh, the play is called Blog and Macbeth. And my favorite line from the play is, I have tasted souls must blah. And that's a dark line for sure. But what I've really appreciated about it is that when characters bring forth offers to you as a person or as a playwright to kind of go, how do I interpret that? And how do I allow myself to think in those spaces that allow me to be fearless, to be brave and serve the character? And so these, this is the words from Matsuko san, who is Macbeth, which means evil son in uh, Plains Cree. And so, yeah, I've tasted souls, must Wow, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yolanda, how about you? Um, so the line, <laughs> the line I chose, is Lainey, you can't roast wieners on grandma's sacred fire. Um, so <laughs> my play is called My Sister's Rage, um, and it's sort of a love letter to the indigenous women in my family and the Kwe and fellow two-spirit folks who have guided me in my life. Um, at its core, it's about a family dealing with the hospitalization of their matriarch and working through a past grief. Um, and how laughter is our medicine. And so there are four young cousins who camp out in their grandma's backyard while the, their, the mothers of the three sisters are at the hospital, um, which often happens when a matriarch is in the hospital. Um, and yeah, this line is spoken by the character of Valerie and it's said to her 15 year old cousin, Lainey. Um, and I love this line because it's at a moment, you know, when things are particularly somber, but it really shows how um, Indigenous folks find humor in our hardest moments um, and how youth are finding their way back to ceremony in whatever ways they can. And so, you know, if that means a sacred fire and a wiener roast pit, then <laughs> that's kind of what they do. So, yeah, the line is, um, you can't roast wieners on grandma's sacred fire. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and Dalbir, how about you? Sure, yeah. So my um, play is titled Five Red Hands. Um, and one of the lines that's most resonant to me right now is uh, this one. History stays on you like that beauty mark on your back, that small scar below your nipple, that defeated posture. It stays with you, and just the smallest thing could bring it flooding back. A tear in your mother's sari or the smell of masala. When your history comes, it arrives in whispers and voices. Uh, so this line is quite resonant to me as it's recited by the character Gurdip um, because it kind of serves as the ideological mission statement of the play itself, which is how childhood traumas um, affect and shape adulthood and are oftentimes linked to a particular historical politicized trauma. Um, as the play is set in an immediate post uh, US 9 11 setting. Um, so, yeah, do you want me to recite the line again? <laughs> that would be amazing. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, history stays on you like that beauty mark on your back, that small scar below your nipple, that defeated posture. It stays with you, and just the smallest thing could bring it flooding back. A tear in your mother's sorry, or the smell of masala. When your history comes, it arrives in whispers, in voices. Wow, thank you so much. Again, I could just spend all night talking to all of you and we do have to move on. <laughs> so now we're gonna hear from Guandac Theater as they announce the winner. Tansi, hello, my name is Colin Wolf. I'm the artistic director of Wandak Theatre, a professional indigenous theatre based on White Horse Yukon on the traditional territory of the Kwanlin Nun First Nation and the Tom Quachin Council. I'm currently coming to you from 
uh, Dawson uh, at the uh, Denojajo Cultural Center on the traditional territory of the Trondek Quechan First Nation. Uh, we're here doing a uh, tour of our production of Women of the Fur Trade by Indigenous playwright Francis Conkin. I'm currently standing in front of a, a really powerful uh, mask art exhibit um, created by local uh, artist Faye Chamberlain. Um, it's a really amazing piece, uh, and there's some hope that it will tour across the country. So if you can help with that, please help us out. Reach out to the Denoja Show Cultural Center. I'm presenting the Playwrights Guild Drama Award today. Um, the shortlist of plays are uh, Palkin Macbeth by Renalta Arla, My Sister's Rage by Yolanda Bono, and Five Red Hands by Dalbir Singh. The jury thought that Palkin Macbeth was grounded in a visceral magic and was both intelligent, fresh, and moving. The jury found My Sister's Rage to be a searing slice of life with a beautiful use of language, language, physicality, and silence within the storytelling. The jury felt that Five Red Hands was well-structured, brave, visually exciting, and was unexpectedly hopeful. And the winner is... My Sister's Rage, Yolanda Bottom. Okay, um, I, I uh, was not expecting that. <laughs> um, uh, wow, uh, okay, get you make much for this honor. Um, it is a deep honor to even share a category with such amazing playwrights. Um, I wrote My Sister's Rage for and about the strong quay in my own family and the strong quay that I know in my life. I wanted to talk about family and I wanted to center the voices of indigenous women and the voices of our two-spirit and non-binary youth. Um, and to tell, not to tell a story about that, but just have them all exist as who they are with all of their love and passion and humor, mostly humor. Um, I wanted to talk about how we as Indigenous people often use laughter as medicine, how my family used it and how this particularly Native, how this particular Native family uses it um, or finds their way to it. Through grief and trauma, there is a way back to healing. The story and the stories within this story uh, poured out of my body as I sat on the edges of the icy Gichigami Sea Bay, which you might call the Gulf of the St. Lawrence. It was uh, primarily written on the island now known as Newfoundland, the traditional lands of the Beothuk and the Mi'kmaq, gifted to me and inspired by the mountains, the waters and ice, the birds, the neshi, the stones, Ake, and my ancestors who stood beside me. Uh, it was continued to be written on my ancestral and Anishinaabe lands. This script was developed with the support of Emma Tabaldo at the Playwrights Workshop Montreal and CEAD through Grossmore's Playwrights Residency. It was also developed with the support of the Ontario Arts Council and Banff Playwrights Lab. And I just want to say Gichi Miigwech to the jury and to Playwrights Guild, um, Playwrights Guild of Canada, as well as the Studio 180 and TO Live for continuing to support the development of the story, as well as Lindsay Lachance for her beautiful land-based dramaturgy and to every performer who has lent their voice to this work. Uh, let's continue to uplift Indigenous voices and storytelling and serious congratulations to all the other nominees and all the winners tonight. Gichi Miigwech. Bama Pi. Congratulations, Yolanda. So now it's time for the Lifetime Member Award, which recognizes a PGC member for a body of work and your service to Playwrights Guild of Canada and the theater community. So we will now watch a video that starts with a surprise announcement at Thousand Islands Playhouse. Director of Breakfast for Here at the Thousands Playhouse, and it has been our absolute pleasure.
be a part of the uh, the development of the trajectory and the success of this production of Serving Elizabeth, of the play Serving Elizabeth. And I thought I would be remiss if I didn't take the opportunity publicly to uh, to thank the wonderful person who's at the center of all of this, Miss Marcia Johnson. I have to admit, we are actually covertly filming this. You see there's a little red dot over there. Uh, because we have another guest who is here tonight to uh, say a few words to Marcia. Queen Elizabeth? She was not available. But uh, Monique from Playwrights Guild of Canada is here to join us. Sorry, I'm not the queen. <laughs> But I'll bow to you. Um, yes, thank you, Brett, for having me. I am Monique. I am here to represent Playwrights Guild of Canada, and I'm here as a fan of Marcia Johnson. Um, Playwrights Guild of Canada is a national organization that promotes, protects, and um, supports playwrights all over the country. And Marcia is one of our members, a very active member. Um, and I get to be the lucky one to come here tonight and kind of make a surprise announcement and present you, Marcia, with Playwrights Guild of Canada's Lifetime Membership Award. <laughs> your work, the work that you've done, the work that you will still do that paves the way for important stories to be told on stage. And I personally am very honored to present to you this award because Marcia, I don't think I've ever met a more generous theater creator. The generosity is in everything you do, whether it's as a friend, an audience member, a colleague, or a collaborator, a performer, and a writer. And so that generosity that fills the room when you show up is clearly felt by everyone around you. So congratulations, Marcia. Thank you for everything. And all the other, all of us at Thousands Play us thank you as well. It's been a pleasure. So we are filming this because it will be aired. This presentation will be aired on Sunday as part of the Tom Henry Awards. You don't have to make a speech now. <coughs> but you will then. So thank you to everyone and thank you, Marcia. Thank you. Wow, that was so beautiful to witness. Uh, congratulations, Marcia. Now let's enjoy this next collection of videos. I was asked to contribute this because I've known Marcia for several decades now. And uh, just to give background, we met doing a children's theater tour. And then after that time, um, Marcia had a job as receptionist for a Toronto theater company while I was working box office at a different Toronto theater company. And on our breaks, we would phone each other and have a chat and she would start telling me things about what had happened in her day. And they were so funny that I was encouraging her to write them into monologues. And eventually she did start compiling them into stand-up routines, which she did perform as a stand-up around Toronto area, while at the same time working on her writing, which eventually uh, she compiled into fringe shows, uh, either for her to perform in or for her solely as author. And I um, just wanted to say that she heard she never gave up. Like she just consistently showed determination, faith, and tenacity uh, in writing before any reward or acknowledgement came of that. So, congratulations. Love you. I first really got to know Marcia in Mumbai, India, 
where we were attending our first Women Playwrights International Conference. Since that conference, Marcia has been very involved in WPI, and that is typical of Marcia. When something needs to be done, Marcia is the one piping up to say, yes, I can help with that. In South Africa, Marcia and I and our fellow Canadian travel companions cooked up an idea to support women playwrights in South Africa. This became the CASA Award, and Marcia, of course, has been integral to its evolution. Whether it's CASA, the Women's Caucus Steering Committee, dramaturging young playwrights, working with Got Your Back Canada, or reading children's books all through the pandemic, Marcia consistently strives to make the world a better place, both through her wonderful creative energy and her unflagging support for causes and people that are close to her. Simply put, Marcia Johnson is a magnificent human and a fantastic travel companion, and I am thrilled that she is getting this award. Hi, Marcia. Uh, I think it's really fitting that you are getting this Lifetime Membership Award uh, because you spent your lifetime being the most generous and supportive person in Canadian theatre, bar none. And it's also wonderful that this honour is coming at a time that your exceptional writing talent is also is being is being recognized and celebrated on stages across Canada. It is the year of serving Elizabeth and also the year of deserving Marcia. Congratulations. Hi, my name is Roxanne Norman, and I was very, very lucky in my life to grow up with Marcia Johnson, my godmother. Uh, I've been completely blessed to see Marcia's work grow and evolve, even from her early days as a stand-up comedian. Uh, and one thing that I will never, ever forget is seeing Perfect on Paper for the first time, one of Marcia's earlier works. I was just a kid, you know, but this was the first time in my life I'd ever seen something go from words on a page to people standing and this incredible magical experience of watching live theatre. And Marcia herself has carried that magic with her for her whole life, and I couldn't be prouder. Or, and I don't know anyone who deserves this as much as you do. I love you very much. <sighs> I'm supposed to talk now? Um, well, I'm blown away. Um, to get an award for doing something that I love so much, something that I feel it's a privilege to do, um, it's, you know, it, I still, it's been a few days now and I still can't wrap my head around it. Um, what I'd really love to use the time that I have is to just encourage everyone out there. This has been a rough time for a lot of people, but the, the benefit of being a writer is you can really use that alone time. You can really look into yourself and uh, look at other people's work and, I mean, keep going. There is no deadline. You know, you don't have to have your first production by a certain age. You don't have to, um, you know, achieve certain things. People just appreciate the stories. And it's only by writing them that you'll get better at them and that you'll eventually get noticed. Believe me, <laughs> you know, um, if I had, I'd heard a lot of people say things like, if I don't achieve a certain thing by the time I'm 30 or 35, well, then I'll know it's not meant to be. Please don't listen to those people. Keep telling your stories. And I would just like to thank everyone involved. I, I know I won't know everyone who is behind all this, but just the people on screen and who were at the theater, um, Brett and Monique, Denise Norman, Bev Cooper, Dave Carley, and Roxanne Norman. I. I love having you in my lives. I'd also want to take this opportunity to thank people who mentored me early on. Um, Brian Court, Dave Carley again, um, Janet Sears, and, um, and Sharon Pollock, when I entered a playwriting contest, it sent a handwritten note saying, we, you didn't place and you didn't win, but I feel that you have something, please keep writing. And Martha Henry, who gave me my first Playwrights Recommenders grant, which I bought my computer with. Um, I love theater. 
I love the people that create it. And I just want us to keep going. Keep going. Thank you very, very much. I am so, so honored. Good night. Wow. Thank you so much for those beautiful words, Marcia, and congratulations. Now, I would like to welcome the new PGC president to the screen, Chris Tolley. Thank you so much, Carmen. Um, I'd like to just finish off the evening by thanking a few people. But before I do, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm here in Toronto, uh, coming from the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat people, and many other First Nations who have come before and will come in the future. Carmen, I would like to thank you for hosting tonight. It is a tough gig, but you made it look easy and you did it with style and grace. So on behalf of everyone at the PGC, thank you so much for doing such an incredible job. And I'd like to congratulate all the nominees and all of the winners. Uh, you are truly an inspiration to all of us. I would also like to thank everyone who works at the PGC for putting together this evening. It is a monumental task to put something together and it went off without a single hitch, without a single glitch. And I'd also like to give a very special thank you to Monique who took the lead on this evening and you created magic. So thank you so much everyone at the PGC and thank you Monique. And I'd also like to mention that this is the 50th anniversary of the PGC. That means it's been 50 years that this organization has helped to create a supportive and welcoming community for playwrights across Canada. And we have several ways that we look forward to celebrating and marking this huge milestone. Um, and we want to hope we want to make sure that you are part of some of these festivities. So please keep your eyes and ears open and we look forward to celebrating with you. On behalf of the board, we'd like to thank everybody who attended and all of the members for making such an extraordinary community that we have right now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much, PGC, for having me. It's been an absolute honor to be here. I'd love to congratulate all the nominees and all the recipients of the Tom Hendry Awards. And I want to thank, once again, all the sponsors, all the artists who joined us on the screen tonight, our amazing ASL interpreters. Thank you very much. And to everyone for tuning in. The Tom Henry Awards will open again for submissions in the spring of 2022. I hope you all have a fabulous night. Goodbye. Thank you.